Governor's office continues to count ballots for the key races here in San Diego. We're talking to Carl DeMille from Reform California on the impact of these races. Good morning, Carl. Good morning, Paul. All right, well, let's start with the mayoral race. Is that margin? I mean, wouldn't Barbara Bree have to pick up like 85% of the remaining vote to win? Yeah, and it's over. Uh, Barbara should have been performing better with the first round of absentee ballots that were counted yesterday. Instead, she fell farther behind. She was only down by 60,000 votes. Now she's down by 63,000 votes. Um, and I, so I think that that race uh, is called, it's done. Uh, Todd Gloria will be uh, the next mayor of San Diego. And with the overwhelming uh, wins by the uh, Democratic wins in the city council, how is uh, government going to change here locally as it relates to a pretty significant blue wave? It is a blue wave, but it's a, it was a wave that started about uh, 15 years ago. Uh, some would argue 20 years ago when demographic changes started happening in the city of San Diego and the county of San Diego. Um, what you're seeing in the 2020 election is just the ultimate final uh, breakthrough of the Democrats catching up to those demographic changes. Remember in 2010, uh, I was on a city council of a 2-6 two, two minority Republican city council. Uh, and we were able to build it up to uh, a tie, 4-4 in 2020, uh, sorry, 2012. Uh, and so losing District 7, uh, you know, was always going to be a tough race. The real disappointment uh, in the results is losing District 5, which was my old city council seat. Uh, and uh, uh, it was a pretty big surprise to see uh, that seat go to the Democrats. What it's going to mean are more extreme policies at City Hall, no real check, um, you know, I wouldn't say that the that Mayor Faulkner has been a check on the extreme policies thus far, but he's been somewhat of a buffer. Now you're going to see unbridled craziness coming out of City Hall. And that means that we've got to be ready on the outside to push back and to hold these politicians accountable when they go too far. Well, you know, but you can talk about changing demographics, Carl, but we saw in Florida, we saw in other places where the Latino vote w supported Republicans in large numbers. Isn't it more about finding a candidate who can address the changing dem demographics and appeal to them? Absolutely. Uh, and so changing demographics are only part of the issue. When you have changing demographics and a positive response and, and viable candidates and a bold agenda by Republicans, you can win Latino votes, you can win Asian votes, uh, African-American votes. What I've seen nationally is a major increase uh, in President Trump's support amongst Latinos, amongst African-Americans. We've seen him double, at least double, uh, according to polls, and I, I don't think the polls are even capturing it right, his support amongst African-Americans and Latinos compared to Mitt Romney and John McCain and other Republican candidates. But also even in the LGBT community, uh, Trump doubled his support from 2016 from 14 percent to 28 percent. And this is according to a New York Times poll. So, look, the reality is you're absolutely right. Demographics are only part of the equation. It's a shame that the Republican Party doesn't respond to those demographics uh, by by pursuing bold agendas, bold policies that will resonate in those communities. Faulkner did not do that. In fact, I would say that Faulkner is the path of, of, of failure for Republicans uh, in the state of California because he's offering soft serve vanilla ice cream. He's being a, a, a moderate Democrat uh, instead of actually providing a real uh, contrast to the extreme policies being laid out by Democrats. So if Republicans want to have a resurgence, and I believe they can in California, they need to be thinking about how they come up with bold, creative ideas that resonate and really impact people's lives for the better. Take a look at the statewide ballot measures. California voters agree with Republican ideals. They rejected Prop 16, the racial discrimination initiative, and we are on the verge of winning Prop 15. Uh, we, we are on the verge of winning the, um, uh, uh, defeating the tax increase. Right now we're ahead, the no vote on Prop 15, by more than 430,000 votes. Nobody expected us to be in this position. Uber, Lyft, Prop 22, uh, a major victory there. 58% of Californians rejecting AB5 and the notion that government ought to dictate to us like some nanny state 
uh, who and how we can work but Carl, um, and earn a living. Carl, let me just interrupt you. Just But yet the p- politicians who supported a lot of those props won decisively. Gloria and Gonzalez and uh, Tara Lawson Reimers, uh, as far as Prop 15 is concerned. Explain the disconnect where the policies fail, but the politicians who support them win. Because, uh, frankly, the candidates running against them did not make those the decisive issue in the campaign. Uh, as much as I like Kristen Gaspar, what did she do? She followed the Faulkner model of trying to serve up soft serve you know, vanilla ice cream. Uh, you know, I can work with everybody. Well, what do you stand for? What ultimately do you stand for? Because with Tara Loss and Reamer, you're getting an extremist, a socialist, someone who wants to get rid of cars and push us all into a bus, someone who believes in backs AB5, who thinks government ought to decide how we work, um, someone who supports tax increases. And yet, those policies were not the major focus of that campaign. Instead, it was fluff. You can't run on fluff. You got to run on something that stands and means for something. And I think that Trump uh, has shown that you have to stand and fight for something. Uh, Otherwise, your opponents who are fighting for something bad uh, will likely get more people excited, more people to turn out. And so in these races, I, I really think that Republicans need in California to reject the notion that they become, um, you know, people s- standing in the corner uh, saying, please like me, please like me, I'm not bad, I might be a Republican, but I'm so sorry. That's not how you win. Well, how you win is by leading, offering bold ideas, and being right. willing to have some people get upset with you and oppose you. 